друзья, гости, коллеги. Friends, dear colleagues, dear guests. A good afternoon, and it may very well be a good morning for some of you. It's such a pleasure to have you. We have an extremely important topic to discuss with you, and we do have a very packed agenda. It is very well known that the subject of science art and technology art is coming to the fore of public attention. You know, new projects keep coming around and new programs on those matters are being launched by various tertiary education institutions. Our very life, not just art, is changing. And we have initiated this symposium to have a proper discussion with the leading experts in the science art field, with the people you know who know everything there is to know about it, people who have pioneered science art, both abroad and in Russia, we have our guests with us today, and we are particularly grateful to those who have, you know, decided to fly here from wherever they were. Please note that it's a hybrid event, meaning that people are watching us online, and we also have people in attendance here physically. This symposium is run in two languages, and we actually have a simultaneous interpretation equipment provided and we have a, a pretty good interpreter helping us so please you know buckle up there will be a lot of discussions today in russian as well as english i see that nobody needs interpretation equipment well maybe that's a good sign in any case we are going to spend the day structured in three different sessions if you like, it will be a brainstorm in three parts. And so the first part will be about the transformation and the new roles in the science art field, about in new meanings, new sense making, if you like. And we are going to hear it all from the main players in this particular field. So we are going to discuss it. And I guess it will be a very, very rich discussion. It is a conscious choice that we're not going to have many presentations. It will be primarily a discussion. So people in the audience here today physically and people online, please send in your comments to make it an even better discussion. The second part will center around the new elements exhibition, the new one that we have. And it's actually more than an exhibition because we are looking in this particular exhibition for new elemental beginnings, if you like. And there are lots of different things there, such as analog computation and what have you. But the big idea is that we have invited scientists, technologists, philosophers, and artists. And, you know, with the benefit of this rich, multifaceted perspectives, we should be able to learn more about the subjects being depicted. A good artist always wants to immerse herself in what she is doing. And we will be talking today about transformation of technological art and discovery of new meanings. I'm very grateful to the partners who have supported us and who have made this whole event possible. I'm referring to Kaspersky Labs, which is our strategic partner. We are happy and we are proud to be partners of Kaspersky Labs, but we also have our cultural partners who are supporting us at the international level. In particular, very grateful to the Goethe Institute, Austrian Cultural Forum, the Embassy of Finland, as well as UK-Russia Creative Bridge Program, run and supported by the British Embassy in Moscow. What we all have in common is our desire to learn more about the world, although we do use different methods to get there. Some of us use art, others use science, but in fact, these two methods are not antagonistic. And here we are trying to show and show very convincingly that A, they are very closely interrelated, and B, the most interesting things can spring forth from their intersection. All right, I'm Daria Perhanka. I'm the curator and the founder of Laboratory Arts and Science. So let me officially open the first session. Well, we'll be talking about science art today 
and transformation of interdisciplinary communities. We have a stellar lineup of speakers. Actually, you probably cannot even imagine the kind of stellar lineup we have. So, I want to invite into this room uh, virtually, so to speak, our dear guests. They have found their time to share their insights and their ideas with us. We will be discussing, you know, the current state of the land, so to speak, in the professional science arts community. Can we please project onto the screen all the great speakers that we have on Zoom? Thank you so much. Such a pleasure to see you all at the same time. Dear friends, I'm delighted to see you all. And let me quickly introduce you. Hello, Martin. Martin Gonzik. Now, Martin is uh, the head of Ars Electronica Festival, Ars Electronica Press, Bricks, I'm, um, I'm sorry, and also runs Ars Electronica International Awards. And for over 20 years, he has been uh, one of the chief drivers, locomotives of this very important festival. I'm very much aware that for many people listening to us today, Ars Electronica is the most inspirational forum because it is the forum where so many great new ideas get hatched, so many new ideas get swapped. So Martin, thank you so much for finding the time for us today. And then Yuri, hello there. So Yuri is a curator and the founder of Kapelice Gallery in Ljubljana, Slovenia. And it's actually one of the most radical galleries in the world. You know, way before new trends and new tendencies get hatched, Yuri, together with his artists, weaves the fabric of what's going to happen soon. So he's at the very bleeding frontier of whatever is happening in the world. I'm also delighted to give you Daria Miller, and Daria is a curator and a researcher at ZKM, and ZKM is one of the most influential museums and in technology art located in Karlsruhe. So she's a researcher and a curator as well, and one of her latest globally reaching projects, so to speak. Please bear with me. It's called Critical Zones. So it's a privilege and a pleasure to have Daria with us. Thank you very much for finding the time. Next, we have Orkan. Good morning, Orkan. I realize it's very early in the US. So Orkan right now is based in the United States. And again, let me use the opportunity to thank our guests for actually, you know, getting up so early because it is still very early in the other part of the world. So Orkan is a researcher, a media artist, I'm sorry, and at the same time, he's a scientist at the U of P, University of Pennsylvania, and he's going to share his interdisciplinary experience with us today. Next, we have Irina Aktuganova, and she's one of the pioneers of technology art in Russia. She's a curator, and she's also the creator of uh, so many different exhibits and exhibitions. In 2017, under her curatorship, the first science art museum was launched in this particular country. And it, in fact, it's a collaboration with the Institute of Physiology in Kultushi. Next, we have Dmitry Bulatov. And in this particular country, Dmitry Bulatov is one of the chief um, people, you know, making science art popular and raising awareness of it. And by the way, right now, he is launching a new master's program in the same field, that is the field of technology art. Dmitry, Irina, a pleasure to see you. And also, we've got some great colleagues with us right here in the room. I'm talking about Anna Titevets. 
So Anna Titovets is a lecturer, curator, a media artist, and very recently, about two months ago or so, she actually launched the Museum of Cryptography, of which she is the curator. And obviously, they've got lots and lots of arts there. And also, we have Konstantin Fursov with us. So, Konstantin, please join us here. So, we are running this event in a hybrid format. So, Konstantin Fursov has got a PhD in social sciences. And interestingly, he has, uh, he's like a newcomer in the science art field, but he is deputy director of Polytechnical Museum of Moscow in charge of science. So he's very much interested in the subject and he wants to do more in the field of science art. So we think it's very important for us to have him with us today. Dear friends, I hope you will all find it easy to share your ideas, maybe your concerns with us. Naturally, I absolutely had to invite one of the founders of technology art in the world, so one of my teachers, one of my mentors. Naturally, I'm referring to Peter Weichel, and he actually sent in his manifesto. He did it actually yesterday, I think. So I think it will be a great way for us to open this discussion. It's not a long manifesto, but on the other hand, it's not entirely short either. Now, I hope that you will share in my pleasure of reading out Peter Weibel's manifesto. And by the way, Peter Weibel is the head of ZKM museum in Karlsruhe, I've already mentioned. Biomedia and life sciences are so starting the manifesto. 30 years ago, in 1993, I sketched a future for art that can no longer be evaded in the years 2020, 2022, when a virus held the attention of all humanity captive because it threatened the earth-spanning human chain of life. The project of the life of human beings, their coexistence, as well as their biological survival, has been questioned in a radical way as rarely before. After the success of the expansion of the visible horizon, I'm sorry, after the success of the expeditions into space and the rocket and satellite supported expansion of the visible horizon into the galaxies, there is orbital view, the view upwards. The view was forced to turn downwards in these years towards Earth. This terrestrial view has turned from clusters of galaxies to clusters of molecules from the largest possible to the smallest possible bodies, such as viruses and bacteria. They're invaders of our bodies, but also co-inhabitants of our bodies and determine life and death. From these co-inhabitants, we learn that we ourselves are only co-inhabitants of the Earth and that other co-inhabitants, from plants to animals, also decide about our life on Earth. In any case, we humans do not decide alone about our survival on planet Earth. Thus, we turned from guardians of the galaxy to guardians of Gaia. With life at risk, life sciences moved to center stage, and specifically new forms of life science that study not only natural organic materials, but also inorganic artificial building blocks of life. Computer simulations and models thus play a crucial role from computational neurology to molecular biology. Creating processes of life from non-living elements is a primary goal. For example, artificial beings with life-like behavior, an essential role in this context. I'm sorry, a further development of the cybernetic system theory will play an essential role in this context. After all, system means interdependence of all elements. Thus, the functionality of the system can be increased, whether we're talking about the Earth system or the system of human organs, whether the heart or the brain, non-functioning particles can be subsidized. This further development of the system theory is called network thinking. Thus, in the future, diseases will no longer be named after organs, since they manifest only symptoms of the disease. The cause of too high blood pressure doesn't lie in the organ of the heart, that is the effect of several system defects. In this sense, 
Life is to be imagined as a network and the new form of life sciences will further develop the seven fields I listed back in 1993. Evolutionary art, biogenetic art, genetic engineering, algorithmic art, robotics, virtual beings, and artificial life. These technical networks and systems supported by AI and big data will expand the life sciences from natural to artificial, from organic to non-organic, and create new forms of media systems, the biomedia. The 19th century was the era of machine motion, 20th century, the era of motion media like movies. The illusion of motion was the first step to the imitation of life. And the 21st century will be the century of biomedia, which shows a life-like behavior. So that's inspired by Weibel himself. I suggest we actually begin our discussion today. So my first question should probably go to Martin. Martin? Please tell us about your ideas, about the transformations and new senses that you see in our sphere. Because you are absolutely a leader in all, all these uh, directions of techno art, science art, and all different intersections between different spheres. About your ideas, about the transformations and new senses that you see in our sphere. Um, you are absolutely a leader in all these uh, directions techno art, science art, and all different intersections between different spheres. Yeah, first of all, um, where is me now? Hello, everybody. Good morning. And, uh, good morning to the Holy Round, uh, where I'm honored to join. And thanks for this uh, invitation. Um, and thanks, Peter Weibel, um, to put a little bit of weight to us. <laughs> um, to my vision, to my ideas, I just... Um, Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, good morning to the Holy Round, uh, where I'm honored to join. And thanks for this uh, invitation. Um, and thanks for the Bible um, with a little bit of weight to us. Um, Martin, I think you... you... Do you hear us now? I think it's only you. You use Zoom, not YouTube. Yeah. Oh, да. Я говорю тогда по-русски. Правильно я понимаю, что я сбиваю, да, перевод? Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Do you hear us now? I think it's only you. You use Zoom. Not YouTube, yeah? Ah, uh, Martin, пожалуйста, выключи YouTube трансляцию. Martin, could you kindly switch off the YouTube broadcast? Is it possible that you have it somewhere? You are muted. So that so that you, you're only listening to us on Zoom. Mm -hmm. so apparently somebody has both Zoom and YouTube at the same time. That's why we have this <laughs> looping problem. I think this little somebody was a uh, little me. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry for that intro. <laughs> but isn't it about technology, what we're talking here? Um, I don't know what you hear, that it was, I just have to say, it was a wonderful soundscape. This loop, uh, I was drowning so deep. <laughs> uh, technical commander. We seem to have lost you in a totally different way now, Martin. Um, Yuri, uh, 
Может быть, ты возьмешь слово за Мартина? Юрий, would you like to take the floor now, while Martin is apparently experiencing some technical issues? So what's uh, happening right now in the field of technology arts, tech art, and well, um, yes, I hope uh, this looping problem we will not continue because it's uh, super difficult to understand uh, whether you are listening to me or uh, there is a delay that. Uh, um, um, this overlapping over my voice, however. Um, for me, uh, representing a rather small uh, institution, not like Ars Electronica, who is really uh, a platform where you can see what is happening in the whole world, uh, would be difficult to give um, an overall uh, oversight of uh, what is happening in the world, but um, nevertheless, now world is uh, co uh, connected. It's basically um, one click. Uh, oh, the the farthest destination is only one click away. So um, I mean, in sense of communication and in sense of knowing what is going on. Um, right now, I believe, as uh, Peter Weibel said in his uh, letter. Um, we are living in a uh, society that is uh, saturated with uh, all kinds of technologies, not just digital. And um, we need to develop a certain uh, level of literacy, technological literacy, that it's very important to understand um, what is the um, uh, time we are living, we are living in. Um, in the art fields, uh, working with artists as the most sensitive uh, individuals in this world, we are, so to say, kind of 10, maybe even 15 years ahead of what is uh, the common belief of uh, the state of the art of um, cohabitation with technology, because the artists uh, start investigating the, possibil the possibility of um, living together with uh, technology in a critical way, like <clears throat> really, really soon. So uh, from the uh, art perspective, uh, what it's happening today in the form of connectivity being, everything being digitalized is not something new. Um, however, um, it is um, not a good satisfaction just knowing that since we can observe how the societies are struggling with, with uh, that, with understanding um, how the technology can empower them and how they should use the technology and not technology that it's using them. So it's still uh, in right reaction. We still have to do a lot of work uh, to achieve this certain level of literacy. But on the other uh, on the other side, it's um, we are living in the century of biotechnologies, and um, all these living systems that artists are investigating right now, and all these hybrid realities that they are creating between um, humans and animals, humans and plants, humans and machine, machines and plants, machines and animals, all these kind of connections are uh, nowadays in the focus of uh, the avant-garde artistic productions, which is bringing in front a so-called post-humanistic understanding of um, um, actually, it's bringing in front the post-humanistic need to understand a world as connected, as uh, overlaid and saturated with all kinds of organisms um, that we need to understand not uh, hierarchically, like humans on top and everything uh, uh, else subordinated, but somehow interconnected in the same horizontal uh, more or less horizontal uh, horizontal level. Nowadays, this is not um, understood as um, 
uh, as a naturalistic approach to uh, uh, to our society because um, sciences, these life sciences, empowered us with um, immense knowledge uh, nowadays and also with immense uh, responsibility of how we are intervening with uh, uh, living organ other living organisms. But that, in the same way, it's also opening a myriad of questions that we need to answer to. And I believe that uh, artists collaborating with scientists, engineers, and also other experts uh, being on the forefront of these uh, questions are super important to hear. Thank you. Uh, Martin. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Yuri. Martin, are you there? Are you with us? Oh, yes, for sure, Martin. So, what are the key things being done uh, by RS Electronica? What should we expect coming from you? What are you going to bring to us in the near future? Would you like to drop any hint or maybe share a piece of advice with the people who are looking for, you know, new findings, new solutions, if you like? What's the most important thing now at the intersection of science and art? Thank you. Um, um... Yeah, actually, thank you for what Yuri said. I think that is, um, I would say, I'm totally on the same page. Um, and thank you, Dario, that you that uh, that you put uh, as Electronica on this uh, on, on this peak position. But um, I, I have to start with that that as Electronica was just accompanying a trend that is not caused by us as an institution, and rather more from the personalities, uh, from the artists that we are representing here. And um, what I wanted to say before, and that I think that fits pretty good also to, to what Yuri said, that, that um, it is not just that we should have more artists contributing on, 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 on prototypical situations where creation, so to speak, is to do uh, outside of the art world. Um, it is that we see in, in the last years um, going along with this uh, tremendous transformations around us that artists um, tend to step out of their bulbs that they uh, contribute and participate um, on, on, on solving, so to speak, the bigger challenges um, with or without a relation to the arts. It is their mindset, their attitude, the way of thinking that they are able to bring in in, 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 the, in the broader discussion. And I'm on the same page with you, I absolutely believe, I mean, I would not promise that we will make the race, so to speak, or with artists, uh, we will the race. But uh, I strongly believe that uh, the mindset of artists help us to ethical and sustainable create things that um, we would we would not meet again in such a uh, in such a bad way like we are doing it now. To what is expect uh, what to expect from us as a, a, a institution? I think. Um, I could fulfill a little bit of a curiosity when it's about uh, the little festival that we prepare. Um, we will do the festival again, yes. Um, we hope the people will, will, will travel, will come um, from Europe and uh, from all over the place. I think this is what a festival is. Um, and um, we will again focus on this uh, little crowd of media artists, on their talents, on their, uh, on their quality, what they are able to contribute. Um, and the, 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 the title will be um, something related with, um, I'm not able to tell, <laughs> no, um, it will have to do something with a, a planet, a planet B, um, with the opportunities that we have, that we as, 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 as a global society, you have to understand that the times are in the past where we can stay off to new shores because we, we already met them all. So there are no shores anymore. We have to deal with those uh, that we have and with the things that we left. 
and that is challenging enough and uh, the festival will deal about uh, that uh, we will see a lot of alternative methods um, life forms where uh, a set of values is set on a total different uh, uh, ground um, not on the ground of uh, the current economic economical systems that is that is um, chasing us so to speak in this disaster situation from my point of view um, and um, we will also see what artists are able to show and to contribute there. Спасибо, Мартин, за такое целостное представление. Я бы, конечно, хотела услышать еще какие-то секреты. Thank you, Martin, for uh, such a holistic overview. I would love to hear also you spilling some beans and sharing some secrets. But uh, maybe this will form my next question to you. Let's uh, first finish, you know, the round with all the speakers. And I'm really looking forward to you sharing some secrets with you, you know, telling us what our new guiding star should be. Daria, if uh, I can actually direct my next question to you. I understand that you work for ZKM, you know, the Temple of Arts, the Temple of Arts and Science. So can you please share with us the most important trends? What is it that you consider particularly important in the field of art and how can, you know, technology art impact this society? How can it shape this society? What are the most important objectives for ZKM today? Thank you. Yes, uh, hello, and first of all, thank you very much for this invitation. I'm very honored to be here in this round. And it was also quite a surprise uh, that you opened the conference uh, by uh, the manifesto by Peter Weibel, because uh, of course we uh, work very close and uh, together, and uh, the program of the sitcom is shaped by his thinking as well. So I can just uh, also confirm what uh, has been said uh, here already by uh, Yuri and Martin that. Uh, basically, also this uh, shift to the earthly perspective, to the perspective of interconnectedness of uh, all the life forms uh, is essential today for artists also. They think a lot about this and reflect it in their works. Um, and uh, of course, this shift is caused uh, in some way also by the ecological crisis that we experience today uh, and by the corona crisis as well. <clears throat> Uh, and um, also in our uh, program uh, at the ZKM, uh, these lines uh, are very much uh, visible and can be observed because uh, two years ago we had this project that was initiated by Bruno Latour, Critical Zones, that you also already um, mentioned, and uh, it was exactly about how we can rethink the world today, how we can rethink, uh, shift the perspective and um, shift the perspective from extractivism into more uh, interconnected and involved, uh, engaged attitude to the uh, world we live in and how we can rethink uh, what was called nature in uh, more, um, yeah, uh, in terms, um, in interdisciplinary terms and uh, more as a view from within uh, this critical zone and not outside, uh, being outside of um, the world we live in. And this is something that artists uh, are very up to now. And uh, the next step uh, was also for the ZKM to explore how uh, technological entities uh, can also be included in these ecosystems that uh, we speak uh, in terms of the critical zone, for example. and. Therefore, we uh, opened uh, uh, at the end of last year this project by media uh, and uh, Peter Weibel's manifesto was also very much about this, about uh, technology behaving as uh, life and what is life uh, today, how can we uh, define life or like what is uh, lifelike or uh, what we think or project into the technology uh, about our ideas of life. Uh, so this was the next step and um, for the next year uh, we are very much now busy with the preparations of uh, our next project and uh, it's already a kind of bit longer discussion and I have uh, here this uh, art forum, uh, Kunst forum uh, magazine, uh, sorry I cannot see it quite well right now. Uh, it's called Leonardo im Labor, so Leonardo in the laboratory. Uh, and it's very much about uh, also 
<clears throat> coming back to uh, the ideas of scientification of art uh, that we experienced not only in the Italian uh, Renaissance uh, in the previous centuries, but also in the uh, Arabic Renaissance uh, of the 9th uh, to the 13th centuries. Um, so uh, there will be a bit of historical uh, retrospective uh, into these um, ideas of scientification of art in the previous epochs and also uh, we see like nowadays these trends that um, artists use the same uh, pool of uh, tools, so to speak, that uh, scientists uh, use and uh, we think that this is something that um, yeah, that shapes very much this uh, field uh, today. Um, of course, uh, there cannot be like comparison one to one <laughs> between uh, these different renaissances, but, but uh, really the idea of using the same tool uh, set um, might unite uh, these different uh, epochs uh, with each other. And we understand, of course, tools as uh, also creative tools as uh, something uh, that can um, um, yeah, uh, unite uh, art and uh, science and uh, used in a positive way also to, to shape a positive view on the future. Because we see nowadays that uh, there is a bit, um, well, not a bit, even much skepticism um, regarding uh, science. Uh, people don't believe anymore into scientific facts. Uh, we live in the age of post-truth and we think it's uh, really important also to defend uh, the scientific positions uh, and uh, uh, this alliance, new alliance of our art and science um, is something that we are very much uh, busy right now here yeah, for preparation of, uh, of a new exhibition project for next year. Я знаю, что выставка называется Ренессанс 3.0. I know that this exhibition is called Renaissance 3.0. And I am very much aware that all of you have this highly conceptual ideas. Ideas that essentially change our perspective on technology art and science art. So I hope you will be able to share something, you know, very special and very sweet, something that you probably have never, ever told anybody. Can you spill some beans on the Renaissance 3.0? Can you share some secrets with us, if that's possible? Thank you. Uh, sorry, there was it a question to me or like the question to... It's uh, the question, uh, it's a вопрос для всех. Yes, that's a question to everybody, <laughs> but apparently you can start because you are doing Renaissance 3.0 exhibition, aren't you? <laughs> but if you want, I can first finish the rounds of questions for everybody and then go back to you if that works. Yeah, this works as well, sure. Um, так как все здесь uh, спикеры, uh, которые уже uh, проявили свои позиции, все упоминают. Well, you must have noticed that all our speakers today have been talking about the environment. Everybody has uh, mentioned in this or that way that art is becoming nature oriented. And my next question will go to Orkin. Actually, Orkin works for. Shall I say he works at the very edge, at the very frontier, and he is a scientist, an artist, and an engineer, renowned for the interfaces he is creating. So, would you like to tell us, Orkin, about your interaction with the tech company and your vision of this environmentalist agenda? I know that it means a lot to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dario, for the question and all the prompts that are raised uh, before me. It's amazing to be in uh, in company of curators, uh, thinkers and artists uh, in this conversation. So what I would like to offer is very few insights in terms of what does it mean to be an artist today, uh, the role of an artist today in, uh, in a planet that is on fire, an environment that's in crisis, not environment that is in, the, in, a, in a climatic crisis, but it's in a, also in a social crisis, political crisis as well. It's, it's very important to be an artist today. 
And it's very also important to understand what artists, what other roles can artists play in this in this complex ecosystem of uh, crises. So um, as, uh, as Daria mentioned, I think there are many different epochs uh, where art, science and technology came together. So of course, my own pedagogy and my own uh, thinking has been shaped by many of the festivals uh, and many of the events organized by um, some of the curators here and the artists that have been represented by these events. And uh, borrowing again, um, Dario's comment, uh, the scientification of art was important, bringing artists uh, to the labs and taking the tools, inventing new tools and, bring in, and bringing the science into the gallery so that we can collabor collaboratively and collectively critique some of the science that was happening there. But uh, lately I've been thinking a lot about other responsibilities of artists where the artistic practice can step outside the festival, step outside the gallery setting so that we can diffuse more into other spaces. So my personal um, uh, perception of my self-reflection throughout the years make me think about myself as a bit more like a performance artist who wears the hat of an engineer sometimes and goes and you know invents tools to be able to contribute to the practice of science. So not only the work gets shown in a gallery uh, or an exhibition or a festival, but also can be disseminated uh, throughout the company. So what does it mean for the artist to be an entrepreneur and really make tools that you can really share in the practice of uh, art uh, or science? Uh, or in other uh, you know, implementations, the artist can actually, this time, uh, work in a company setting, not only with, uh, as, an artistic, as an artist working with other artists, but what does it mean to really do science as an artist? Not to role, embrace the role of a scientist, but do uh, science in an artistic way. I think we can call this maybe the artistification of science and engineering in this new era, because uh, science and engineering, these, these hybrid models, these, these practices are reimagined and reinvented in the age of these new crises. And I think we can bring as artists different value systems, different worldviews, different ways of doing to these companies. So I personally uh, started as an artist, became an academic, and now I'm working as an engineer, an artist engineer, artist scientist engineer, all dashes together in a company where I work with teams of people to really bring different kinds of products or solve different kinds of problems that can address some of these challenges that we are facing uh, in 21st century. So um, I'm going to keep it there. I have uh, images to show if anyone is interested in looking at the work in depth, but uh, I think if I summarize the first era, artistification of science and maybe now, sorry, the scientification of art, and maybe now it's the artist, artistification of science and engineering where we can discuss and think together. Thank you. Да, тут аплодисменты в зале. Я не знаю, слышите вы или нет. I'm not sure you can hear the round of applause which I'm hearing here in the room. I guess, you know, what you've just said must resonate pretty strongly with the people we have. Well, I think it's a great time now for us to turn to Constantine so if we claim that you know art is getting scientified and science is getting artified so to speak and actually you must have noticed that i'm the only moderator today because my co-moderator vlad lena gromova due to health issue has not been able to join me here on the stage she will be you know online but you know we've been preparing the whole thing together with her and uh, i owe so much to her so there is this important question we came up with which goes like this over the past two years of the pandemic you know both in europe and in other places and countries such as russia trust in science has been going down what's the position of the polytechnical museum well you know the polytechnical museum is uh, thinking primarily about the building because you know we need to finish a reconstruction of our main building it's our main concern at the moment but i can tell you what i think about it first there i'm sorry however i should tell you what i think about it 
and I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to I'm sorry for the opportunity to listen to all these great people. My attitude to science is that of a soft scientist rather than a hard scientist. That is, I believe science has got uh, not just, you know, a discovery function to perform, but also a social service as well. Now you are talking about trust. And that's indeed a very delicate issue. If you check out statistics, you will discover, and actually, well, you will discover that the pandemic has played a role in that. But, you know, every technological catastrophe would have had the same results. Remember Fukushima events. Society doesn't respond to a particular science and what happens you know, in the scientific field, but it rather reacts to what's happening to a particular application of science. Please remember the ambivalence of, well, not of science really, but of uh, public attitude to science. It is perfectly possible for people to trust science at the same time with being afraid of science. Most people are used to cognitive dissonance. I do believe that science in various practices of art can help science actually dispel its image of uh, an ivory tower. The function of science is to discover answers and identify patterns. However, Science is not very good at predicting how a particular discovery will be leveraged by the humankind going forward. Sometimes science doesn't know the applications of what, it's, what it finds. An art can be an extremely useful communication partner for a science, because due to this unique synthesis, Art will help science pose the right kind of questions. Well, fortunately, ethics has become part and parcel of pretty much every scientific study today. However, science remains pretty technocratic. Scientists try to be more attentive to matters of, uh, say, morality, but these issues still are not of you know paramount importance to them you know they still want to find answers you know they are looking for say new ways of storing or conveying energy or maybe say developing or growing new vaults in human hearts so if a scientist is uh, supported by an artistic communication tool, this is great news because it enables the society to get engaged in a dialogue about what the science can bring. And this makes me think of three elements where science and art can help each other. One element is pretty utilitarian and it has been mentioned already, like science provides art with new technologies, you know, be it dyes, paints uh, or AI, which is quite good at producing art today. Secondly, art can help science talk about scientific findings. There is, you know, a great, uh, shall I say, project, annual project called Dance Your Dissertation. That's a great idea, you know, of finding a very artistic way of conveying your scientific findings. And it also makes me think of uh, sci-fi novels, which have greatly impacted the technologies we use today. So there is this inspirational function of art towards science. And finally, there is a function I would call co-design. What I mean here is scientists and artists can get together to think about what can happen very soon. On the 8th of February, we launched a contest 
which resonates with what Martin does. We call it START, Science, Technology, Art. And we are pri very privileged to have Daria as one of the members of the jury. And we also have uh, one of the, the other participants of uh, this event as our curator. So as part of this project, we are going to run a live experiment. And we are looking at it through the lens of two different junctions. One is our future with robots, and the other one is a future where we are going to renounce all the benefits that this particular field of science can bring. What will our life be then like in 50 years' time? And it's not an idle question. Actually, if we track the current development of art and science, we will notice that, you know, both fields are getting more and more computerized. And saying no to computers may actually be a very dramatic change for the human society today. So this is one of the key challenges that we have for both scientists and artists, and we're really waiting for them to come up with something very interesting. Well, I do hope that art will not play a design function only. I certainly wanted to be involved in well, design, like there is design as in making the future happen, and there is design as in embellishment. So it's not the embellishment kind of function that I would love uh, this particular project to focus on. My next question will go to Irina. Irina, I know that you're currently working on a new methodology that you want scientists and artists to employ to create new knowledge. Would you like to share with us what it's all about? Yes, sure. And thank you very much for inviting me today. It could be a bit too much to call it a new methodology. However, I've been working with the Institute of Physiology named after academician Pavlov. It is the institute that does research in neurophysiology, cognition, awareness. Well, it was actually founded by academician Pavlov, the first Russian Nobel laureate. So for four years, we have been collaborating with them. And we sort of started it, you know, by doing science art uh, with their scientists and mostly their young scientists came to us to produce objet d'art. However, in this very close collaboration over these four years, we have realized that neither the scientists nor the artists were not really interested in producing artistic objects, even if it was great art. It turned out, in this process of communication, that the most valuable thing they found in this process was uh, cross-pollination, getting exposed to what the others were doing. So they were very much interested in this collaboration. And it turned out that neither were interested in production of art. They may be actually pretty comfortable if there is no artistic object coming from the particular project they have. And they still appreciate very much working with each other. The next step for us involves a launch of series of interdisciplinary research projects. Now, the idea of these projects was not to produce, you know, an artistic statement. Instead, these were indeed cross-disciplinary studies where usually artists actually play the first fiddle. You know, they were very instrumental in deciding what it is they were going into research together. So the two 
like a bigger group, relied on what the artist actually considers a particularly sore point. So artists and scientists collaborate on par and the results can actually be both scientific and artistic. So these projects, in most cases, lead to publication of scientific articles, and sometimes they also have, you know, some artistic outcomes as well. And sometimes, you know, on the basis of this new knowledge, new technological products can actually appear and, you know, can then be separated into spin-offs. So they can, yes, they can be put into spin-offs. Which means that this activity has uh, three pronged outcomes, scientific articles, startups, and artistic objects. And this is, I think, a natural extension of our long collaboration. Thank you very much. You have touched here upon a very important subject of the outcomes. Well, I certainly want you guys to be asking questions to each other. But before we do that, we still need to hear from Anna and Dmitry. And I also want to ask questions to Yuri and Martin, particularly now about the outcomes of their projects. But first, I should go to Anna and Dmitry. So Anna has been working on this new fangled cryptography museum. And this museum is both heavy on science and art. You know, I've been there myself, and I actually went there with our partners from Kaspersky Labs. So they gave me a tour there. And it was indeed a great experience. And I relished exposure to this new field. So I'm wondering if at a place like Cryptography Museum, you need to draw a distinction between art and science. Thank you very much for this question. And thank you very much for the invitation. It's indeed a great pleasure to be here today. It's such a great panel with these great people. It's a shame that, uh, you know, some of our great speakers are only online. No, we cannot hug each other, but it's still such a pleasure to see you all. Yes, I feel a lot of, um, now let me put it differently. I certainly agree with many statements I heard earlier today here. What I want to emphasize is that we keep talking about positive practices of collaboration between scientists and artists. However, if you've been involved in such collaborations, you certainly know that it's uh, not necessarily a positive experience for both parties. What happens quite often is that, you know, as we want to interpret scientific knowledge from an artistic perspective, we will run into, well, quite substantial skepticism on the part of the scientific community. So we can talk a lot about, say, climbing to a new level, to a new level and that would be true. And indeed, there are lots and lots of institutions right now trying to help us expand this cross-disciplinary collaboration. However, what I've called a problem still remains. And as we've been developing this uh, cryptography museum, we experienced exactly that. You know, most of our exhibits are scientific that some exhibits were more artistic and less scientific. Well, I'm an artist myself. I come from the world of media and art, and I've been trying to sort of reconceptualize many of the things we have at the museum through an artistic lens. 
What I also want to stress here today, as we're discussing this uh, lay of the land in the science art field, is that scientists are developing, you know, more and more interest in leveraging the opportunities provided by cultural institutions when they need to be heard, for example. So, for example, you've got a great team called Forensic Architecture at your exhibition. Now, Forensic Architecture, well, they are a great team. They are not artists. However, many of their projects get exhibited at museums and uh, galleries. And this makes me think of Vlad Nieli, which is effectively a research group, which again gets featured a lot at many festivals or cultural institutions. And this is something I consider quite interesting, that scientists now are entering this platform of, you know, festivals, galleries and museums. And very often they are using artistic tools to convey their messages. And that's only natural, right? If we expect artists to learn the tools of science, what's stopping the scientists from doing the same? Now, I think you all remember uh, this exhibition called uh, Cybernetic well, Inquisitiveness, is the sort of clarity or equity. And I think that doing the opposite of this visionary approach would be great. I mean, it would be great to have scientists speak more and leverage more the fora of cultural institutions. So coming back to this issue of cryptography museum, I can tell you that, you know, very often collaborations between scientists and artists are very special in the sense that, you know, we do care a lot about what the scientist has got to say about the outcome of this project. Like we feel very anxious at moments like this. So the feedback that a member of the scientific community can provide is extremely important. Why is this the case? Well, I'm sorry, I'm taking a bit too much time here, but I am wrapping up slowly. So I guess the most important thing for me in this particular project in the Cryptography Museum was this collaboration with the bona fide cryptography scientists and my attempt at, well, tempting them with a different perspective, different Welton showing. And it was very interesting and uh, very unusual, but we're just starting on this journey. So we are experiencing certain issues. And my answer to your question about the need to split them, well, I think we need to do it, but we need to do it seamlessly. Now, you've seen our exhibits. Will you be able to say what is art and what isn't? I actually think it's an important distinction, but if you have a seamless integration and if, say, your art doesn't, you know, make any grandiose claims about it being scientifically true, well, I don't know, really. I think it's very important, you know, to maintain this continuous dialogue between art and science. I think it's uh, very important to have, you know, very scientific exhibits side by side with very artistic ones. Yes, thank you so much, Anna. We will certainly drill deeper with all our speakers today. We have like an hour or more for this session, so we'll certainly drill pretty deep. But first, I will ask Dmitry a question. Dmitry, what are the key trends you're seeing now? I remember we discussed this trend with you, the trend of clusterization. 
something that uh, other people call redetermination. Well, thank you very much, Daria. First, let me corroborate what my colleagues have already mentioned about the most important intellectual breakthrough of the past several decades. I'm naturally referring here to the need to reconsider the traditions of the Enlightenment era. Well, that particular tradition effectively said that humans were the pinnacle of evolution, that humans were the measure of it all. And it did create a particular perspective where we clustered or broke the whole world down into objects and subjects, into things that are animate and inanimate. So we are effectively talking here about the need to re reconsider enlightenment. And it's not really enlightenment three to zero. It's a sort of a, what they call purple enlightenment. And it's called purple for a reason. It actually harks back to the discussion between Newton and Goethe, the two emblematic figureheads of the Enlightenment. So Goethe famously believed that the purple color is effectively excluded from the optical dogma of Newton. So the purple color is effectively the color of our master profile. And I should certainly drop this very important update for me. Higher School of Economics, which despite the name is one of the largest and best classic universities in this country, is launching a master program on arts and science. And it's actually called Arts and Science, science Neo-Cybernetics. We have already mentioned that this neo-cybernetic paradigm is one of the most central and most important paradigms today. I'm going to run this program and it's our joint project with the Moscow Institute of Electronics and Mathematics. So our partners will be responsible, you know, for the the hard skills and, um, you know, the more hardcore technologies. The most important objective we have in this program is to teach students to establish artistic alliances with non-human agents so that they can unleash their joint creative potential. So in line with things you would consider a classical for a technical institutions such as engineering, electronics, DIY. In our program, we'll also have tracks such as uh, critical post-human touristics, media, uh, legal underpinnings of, uh, I guess, robotics, and also machine creativity, and so on and so forth. So this hybrid format, in our opinion, will be able to produce a reality where autonomy, creativity, freedom of choice would not be considered exclusively human attributes. So this purple program or purple enlightenment flag is what we are going to proclaim and we are going to raise this flag high in Russia. We do stand for purple as opposed to linear enlightenment because linear enlightenment be it 1.0, 2.0, 3 or even 4.0. Purple enlightenment is not linear by definition. Purple is the excluded non-spectrum color, something that was excluded from the Newtonian dogma. And Goethe is our guiding star. Wow, this has produced a round of applause in the room. 
And by the way, we are here in the new Tratikov Gallery, and we also are being watched online. So I actually know there are lots and lots of people listening to our Russian language broadcast. Please submit your questions. I am actually getting them resent to me, and I'll try to ask them to the speakers. And I also see hands in the room. We'll try to take questions from the room as well. I'm sorry, I have so many ideas about what I can ask him. Since we've done the first round, I'm wondering if any of our speakers want to ask questions to other speakers. And it's a pretty complicated format, it being hybrid and all, but still, if we can have you know some sensible interaction here let's do it please note you can raise your hand on zoom you can use your physical hand like dari is doing that now or you can use a virtual hand so daria i still have loads of questions to everybody i have a question to martin about education for example and the future of ours electronica but you daria certainly go first uh, I would. I don't have any questions, but I have more, like probably comments to what uh, Anna said, because I think it's very uh, important to um, say that uh, art and science uh, they have different probably uh, arts or kinds of knowledge production, and uh, it's uh, important to differentiate and uh, to say okay that. Uh, Probably science uh, has this epistemic norms of uh, knowledge productions. It's important to see what is truth, but art is more freedom, uh, has more freedom in interpretation, in speculation, and uh, it doesn't have to achieve uh, this scientific uh, uh, norms, uh, so to speak. So we have uh, really to uh, differentiate that. That's uh, that why there is uh, also this uh, difference between art and science. We're speaking about and. Um, also, probably to a bit also uh, of um, reaction to what Okan uh, said uh, about uh, artification of uh, science and scientification of art. Uh, I think uh, there are also so many uh, examples like uh, of uh, scientists or like uh, artists who are trained as uh, scientists uh, who uh, become artists. And um, I have here uh, one example just also to have some visual probably. <laughs> Uh, things. Uh, just a moment, I will uh, share my screen. Um, I have here an example, uh, a work by Spela Petrich. I think it was co-produced by uh, Kapelitsa Gallery and uh, also shown at uh, Electronica. So it's like kind of work that probably speaks to uh, all of us by the um, artist uh, Spela Petrich. And uh, Spela is um, trained uh, as a biologist and has also a PhD in uh, biology and uh, this art, uh, artwork is called uh, play or PLAI so it's a pen uh, um, about play with AI um, and it also speaks about what uh, Dmitry said uh, about uh, non-human um, forms or like non-human uh, uh, communication also because there is a uh, plant, cucumber plant here and uh, AI uh, robots uh, that are interacting without uh, human intervention. Uh, and uh, it's uh, important that uh, they are learning from each other and uh, AI system is trained uh, not on uh, uh, on human uh, brain, uh, so to speak, model, but on the interaction with the plant. So it's a system that is um, trying to um, yeah, to create new form intelligence uh, based on non-human intelligence. And I think this is something that also uh, artists are uh, now very um, into, like um, into research and um, uh, thinking about uh, non-human uh, forms of uh, interaction, of uh, intelligence, and uh, of uh, being, so to speak. Yeah, uh, and also, of course, um, the. Sorry, I have to uh, finish here. Um, yeah. So, um, just just a little comment. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. And indeed, Spela Petrich, you know, 
she is uh, she's been supported very much by Yuri and so many Slovenian artists now are extremely popular around the world and Kapelica Gallery has played a very important role in that this is something that we recently discussed with Yuri Špela Petric is an artist who is both a scientist and an artist because you know she's doing biology she is doing genetics but she's equally at home in the world of art yuri if i can turn to you now what is the current understanding so to speak or let me put it differently can we assume now that science art and technology arts are ceasing to be marginal and they can now be actually seen as art do you believe that we need this kind of segregation do we need to pin ourselves to a particular segment of the art field what's the current situation according to you thank you and uh, naturally i should mention here that yuri has impacted slovenian artists but not just slovenian artists I know that Vitol, Alena Nikonov, and many other artists are watching us today, and they all know that th their art will be elevated to new heights with Capalica Gallery. Yuri? Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> thank you for this question. Also, thank you for these credits. No, just uh, to comment on, on Spela. Indeed, she was trained as a biochemist uh, and she is holding a PhD in biochemistry. But then she decided to work as an artist because uh, the development of ideas through the uh, art practices, uh, she found them like more, more compelling. You know? And I see this, uh, her case and also case of other uh, scientists that are working and collaborating with artists in Kapelica and our laboratories as uh, symptomatic for the state, uh, for the situation of uh, the whole globe uh, these days. And as Orkan mentioned before, we are living uh, on a planet that is in fire, uh, literally and uh, metaphorically as well. And uh, nowadays, we have to see um, um, artists, scientists, engineers, also other uh, researchers and creatives, uh, no more uh, disciplinary. You know, uh, we shouldn't understand uh, this as a single professions, because uh, reality demands from us different, different way of understanding um, of the reality we are living in. So uh, uh, right now, it's not that we may live in very interesting times, as the curator of the Biennale in Venice said, we are living in very interesting times where nothing is sure anymore. Uh, we shouldn't be um, sure of anything we know uh, uh, so far because um, uh, the, rea the reality somehow precedes us. It's in front of us, and we need uh, we need to take pace uh, with it. Not with the old way of thinking or the established way of thinking, but with uh, kind of new way of thinking that it's uh, not disciplinary anymore. So all these collaborations between scientists and artists shouldn't be uh, a name like art, science, and, and so on, because we have this old way of science thinking and science production, and also new way of uh, science thinking and science production. Um, we are constantly encountering scientists saying, the science as we know it, it's over. We um, individualized the, the scientific problems with this way of thinking, with the Cartesian approach, not purple at all. And um, um, the only thing it's ahead of a scientist is just to prove, you know, it's just to, to find proofs of what they envisioned so far. But um, what is staying ahead of us, it's um, something totally different, you know? For example, 
um, all these quantum domain, quantum mechanics, quantum uh, uh, computing, uh, quantum biology, you know, we know uh, a lot of these things. We can even um, uh, mathematize everything. We can prove uh, things, but we still don't understand how this is working. No, it's totally paradoxical. And we need uh, a new way of cognition. So, so far, uh, we had this um, uh, typical um, duality, um, science and technology. But um, as we learned from Marshall McLuhan and his observation that technology is not ne neutral, you know, um, it's a lesson we took because um, science was left to engineers, to technologists only, and they interpret uh, inventions uh, ideologically to produce profit. You know? So, of course, it's not neutral because it, um, uh, the expectations uh, to bring profit is uh, embedded into technological solutions. But when you involve uh, artists uh, into collaboration with scientists, um, there is no product that it's envisioned. It's more the approach and a way of uh, understanding things. So the production of knowledge on the scientific side, it's coupled with the production of meaning on the uh, artistic side. And now, um, when we have these difficulties in understanding what these new innovations in science are bringing in front of us, this production of, uh, of meaning, it's the imperative. So we have to understand finally, or we have to know how to deal it. It's beyond understanding. You no, know, it's like Melevich would say, it's, uh, Zauno, no? it's 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 beyond our reason. It's beyond this Cartesian Newtonian uh, uh, approach. This is when we are speaking about art science uh, uh, collaborations, you know. And there there is uh, nothing inherently logical in this uh, uh, collaboration. You know, scientists are doing science, artists are doing art, but this idea. Uh, collision that it's happening uh, when they uh, work together you know it's very very interesting and we need to to draw something uh, from it and that brings me to what Orkan was uh, opening you know like um, involving artists into uh, production of new innovations that are more ethical no, it means more sustainable, more safe, trustworthy, uh, fair, and, and so on. This is, um, um, this is a responsibility that it's very difficult to uh, pose upon uh, artists, but it has to be done. So uh, I see this uh, collaboration between uh, artists and uh, innovators from different domains, from different professions, as something that we call um, um, innovation catalysis. So we are trying to bring a new profile that it's not harmful neither for artists, neither for scientists, neither for engineers, but it's a profile, it's a, it's a person that is responsible for innovation catalysis and this innovation catalyst should, should understand these different languages and should know how to deal with this uncertainty, with this unknown unknown. He needs or she needs to know to embrace this uh, openness, this radical unstructured openness. Um, in order to um, instigate new way of of uh, 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 speculating, you know, of thinking, of um, of cognition, and of um, 
um, it's very difficult to find a, a, a word, you know, and not fall uh, in something that uh, it's um, already ideal, ideologized. Uh, um, um, and um, maybe this uh, metaphor of purple thinking, it's very appropriate here, you know, because it's uh, now uh, maybe uh, open to, uh, um, um, to attribute new meanings uh, 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 of the word, of the, the, of the, yeah, of the combination of letters. Per, you know? So, uh, um, um, what I believe uh, uh, here is that uh, um, more than ever, this non-linear uh, approach to things is necessary because everything else. It's linear, you know, the scientific development of syntagma of, of uh, thinking and so on, it's linear. Uh, the, the technological as well, only artists are coming, you know, with the holistic approach, with a total unstructured um, uh, and non-linear uh, way of uh, delving into, into different uh, uh, questions, uh, different uh, observations, uh, different uh, uh, phenomena, and uh, right now, oh, right now, maybe last uh, five years in Kapelica, we've seen that uh, these small consortiums of of experts, of collaborators coming from different fields, are creating new tools to convey uh, um, meaning. So it's. Mm, and also new methods. So uh, when you see an, an artistic installation, you need uh, to involve yourself uh, into um, not on, on, only inter, uh, interactive uh, uh, um, interactivity. Uh, this participatory approach it's uh, a little bit different you don't you sometimes you don't need to touch because you will spoil uh the organism that it's living there you know but you would need to use different uh, um, uh biotechnological or uh, um, evolutional uh, uh, approaches and to monitor, to, to, to interfere with this drama of uh, micro performativity and this molecular, molecular sculpturing, these things that, you, that are totally not spectacular, but um, um, the, the drama of living uh, uh, organism and of life as an object is there. You know, and and um, uh, it's not that only engineers and scientists uh, are in need to um, different approaches. Also in art, we see this need, you know, to to a non spectacular um, art uh, representation of art uh, thinking and art. Uh, um, um, art sensing or conveying uh, uh, the the way of how the art artist uh, um, speculate you know? so to 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 abandon the use of thinking because thinking is so much uh, related to brain and to uh, cognitive uh, these classical cognitive practices thank you Спасибо огромное, Юрий. Uh, uh, мне хочется спросить Оркана, uh, может ли он добавить про вот это разделение, есть ли все-таки это разделение, как он к нему относится. И, собственно, Юрий сейчас упоминал, что про переводчика между двумя мирами. So I'm sorry, Orkin, uh, I would like to turn to you now. So uh, I do feel like I'm a catalyst or an interpreter between the two worlds, uh, you know, being a curator. Would you relate to that, Orkin? Thank you very much. Um, is, the, is the question mainly like me, me uh, understanding the role of the curator in the, uh, in the interpretation process, Daria? Can you phrase it one more time? I didn't catch. 
Я хотела спросить про разделение между дисциплинами. Distinction, this you know, this um, binary view of like science and arts, the importance of uh, the boundary between them, you know, the fluidity, if you like, of possible transitions between these two worlds, and the other trends, in fact, that you mentioned in your previous address. Can we yeah, drill I a bit deeper now? Thank you. Yes, I think um, um, I, I would like to drill a little bit deeper because. Um, looking everyone's comments, you know, how they expanded our way of thinking about this binary. Uh, I would like to focus on this word responsibility one more time. What is our responsibility to today in these urgencies that we are experiencing? And I would like to also bring into our attention that art, science, engineering, these are disciplines that we are uh, interrogating. We are trying to find new definitions, meanings for them in 21st century. Uh, in, 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 in light of these urgencies we are experiencing. But on the other hand, we have as humans in this, in this planet, uh, we have different roles. We are mothers, fathers, teachers, farmers, caregivers, citizens. We, we have very different identities that are under the rubric of being an artist, scientist or an engineer. So what does it mean for us to really embrace these high level roles whether it is pedagogy or education. So we are an artist, but we are also an artist mother or a scientist father or a citizen uh, politician. You know, we have these very different hybrid modalities. So I would like to invite us, I would like to invite all of us to think also, what does it mean to think about the, these fields in relationship to our everyday identities? So that when we feel these urgencies in, in our daily life, I mean, we, we suffer from discrimination, we deal with pollution, um, we look at, um, you know, we, 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 racism on every level is there, capitalism creates all kinds of inequalities. So we experience these uh, pressures on our everyday identities in very different ways. So what does it mean then to look one step up and say, okay, if I'm an artist, how do I deal with them? How do I you know, bring that uh, urgency into my practice? Where can I make more impact? Is my impact in, uh, at, at home when I'm talking to my children? Is it about me being a teacher telling uh, about art and science in the classroom? Or is it really like working at the farm, factory, uh, or, a, or in a gallery? So I think maybe we can expand a little bit on the art and science um, dilemma, uh, dilemma uh, or the polemic of how do we uh, bring them together, as Yuri mentioned, uh, not as disciplinary confinements, not as silos of knowledge uh, production, but more like roles and responsibilities that can enable us in the challenges that we deal with every day. Спасибо, Орхан. Мартин, какие новые форматы? Thank you, Orkin. Uh, Marcin, a question to you. What are the new formats you are programming in order to cope with this uh, global emergencies that Orkin has mentioned a number of times already? And uh, naturally, Peter Weibel also talks a lot about them. Indeed, we'll live in those radically new times when changes and crisis have become very prominent, not just for the world of art, but the whole world. Mm. So a question to you, Martin, how does Ars Electronica and how do you as a visionary and an artist see our opportunities and our capabilities as curators, producers, artists, all those who impact the minds? How do you think we can interact differently? What are the new formats we can use what are the new things we can develop? Thank you. Um, I actually don't, thank you for this question. I actually don't know what the new things are. Uh, it sounds for me too, too trendy in this formulation to, to that it would be the next trend that we jump up as a society. Um, I, I see just um, reflecting this entire situation is that uh, I tend to 
observe this entire situation much more from a citizen's perspective than I used to do this from a, prof a, pers a perspective of, as you called me, visioner, a professional or so. Um, and um, this is due to the fact that um, I also see things like uh, Yuri and Okan that the situation changed. I mean, since a few years before, we were sitting here saying, okay, we are a little bit in advance, but we see the disaster coming. Now we are in a situation where this disaster came in a different form and quicker and earlier uh, than before. That, from my point of view, provokes me a little bit that we are sitting here in the, in, in, in the truffle butter, um, um, discussing whether we should kind of uh, shift the borders between uh, uh, arts and uh, science a little bit forward, a little bit backwards. I think if we, are, if we are, uh, are wasting much more time on that, uh, we are losing the train. And it's not about talking about art anymore, about the, 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 what art is good for, what art could uh, deliver or participate. No, um, uh, it's, it's just about that this entire thing that we have been building up as a culture is disappearing. Um, um, so the new thing, what we desperately need is uh, uh, a culture of a new culture of collaboration. It is, it is a new intelligence that shows us uh, um, better where we, what we are doing with these technologies, where we want them to position, uh, um, um, to really make that happen that at one time maybe uh, as, a, as a global common, we are able to move something forward or in the right direction. But to be realistic, what has to happen if uh, a global society is really, literally, able to, in a common sense, um, solve a problem. I mean, tell me one sample when that happened. What has to happen? What, uh, what kind of shifts and transformations need to happen that we, in a democratic way, convince the citizens to, 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 to think, to change their own concept, and not to wait that the others have changed this before? This is much more what is driving me, and this is also much more what I am looking uh, in, in, in the art that is currently around me and that, that, that will be around me. I'm looking for citizens um, that are artists, that are um, uh, scientists, uh, uh, that, that, are all, that, all wanna, that all do see um, the tremendous challenge that we have in front of us. Um, and um, I think the word is collaboration and responsibility. This is uh, what keeps us, so to speak, in the now, um, uh, keeps us being willing to, 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 go f to, to go further and deeper in collaborations, um, because the concept of uh, uncertainty is, is something that we see. I mean, that's simply said too much for us. Спасибо огромное, Мартин. Хотите ли вы, коллеги, друг другу задать какие-то вопросы? Thank you so much, Martin. I'm checking if anybody would like to ask questions to each other. I understand that Daria wanted to have a question to Anna. Uh, I would love to have a discussion for sure. So, guys, dear panelists, if you have questions for each other, that should certainly be possible. It's indeed a very nice and unique panel that we have. And you seem to be very much on the same page given how much you have supported each other. So if you want to add something, you can uh, raise your hand. So Dmitry, Irina, Anna, Konstantin, the others. Let me comment real quick on what Daria said sort of return the favor to her. Indeed, uh, Daria is right. Scientists and artists have uh, different ways of production, quote unquote. And I do agree that this moniker, this um, name of a science art is a bit outdated. But when we talk about it, we sort of stress that artists have a higher responsibility for, you know, what they do and how they use the methodology they took from the world of science. 
So let me stress here that the feedback from the scientific community is as important for an artist working in the field of science art as the feedback from the artistic community or the general public. Dear friends, so we are checking if we have uh, questions from the floor. Oh, we've got so many questions. I'm not sure we will be able to take them all, but let's start with the first row. I guess this one comes from a journalist. I'm not sure we can actually point the camera at the person who is asking this question. Yes, Sonny, you should be able to hand the mic over. Hello, thank you very much for giving me the floor. My question goes to the panelists. I am wondering what you think about the manifesto of uh, Venice Biennale. Because it also talks a lot about the future, about cyber technologies, about robots. And I'm assuming that most of you have read this manifesto. So, do you believe that, you know, Venice Biennale will become a pivotal point? Do you think it will actually promote further development of science art? Thank you. So we keep calling it science art, right? I actually thought here on this stage we're trying to sort of discontinue, sort of uh, drawing this boundary. So would any of the experts want to answer this question? Yeah, just quickly. Um, yes. I haven't read it. Uh, that's why I can, I can be quick and clear on this. Um, when I hear the, the uh, manifesto, this is also for me um, um, uh, a term that uh, comes from a bird's perspective uh, um, uh, and from an old way of thinking that um, every time I hear manifesto, I mean, it's a logical, logical consequence because as a media, it makes us clear that it's kind of a conclusion that uh, 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 in its way of formulation is a compromise that everybody might understand it. But I think even this uh, approach needs to be rethink, re rethought. I mean, there is, a, there is the chance to rethink of what the manifesto of the 21st century could look like, could be, and in which words, in which forms uh, it could be positioned among us that we don't take it as a theory, that we just put like a book back into the shelf. It, a manifesto is nothing more for me now that uh, is a symbol, a, mo a monument of all times that allows me in my cultural practice and intelligence to avoid to confront it, to confront myself with it. And um, uh, we currently and talking about the, the, the last question um, about new formats. Yes, this is what we are currently thinking. Um, but this is something that we will uh, not think as as electronica. We will think this in a consortium of others in Europe, uh, other partners. What is a manifesto of the 21st century? What is the trigger points of the individual and of the community that we react, that we go into action and not lean back and say, I'm so clever, I understood it. And um, that is what I say about manifestos. <laughs> Спасибо огромное, Мартин. Я абсолютно согласна, что нам да нужно больше Thank you so much, Martin. And I, yes, I do totally agree that we need to collaborate more, and we absolutely need to develop such a manifesto together. I actually see this panel today as very important because I think it can indeed bring us all together. It can help us voice new opinions and perspectives. And most importantly, I think it can help us collaborate. So a manifesto like this, in my opinion, should call for a collaboration. And I think it's, um, you know, we're not sure that in the world which has uh, recognized the need for collaboration, we're seeing so much, well, encroachment of different worlds in each other. And I'm so glad that we have this uh, 
international panel today. So I see more questions. Uh, can we please take the mic to the third row? Yes, thank you very much indeed for holding such a great event. You know, for several months, you know, I've been feeling so isolated and I had nobody to discuss those issues with. And what you're giving us today is, you know, a king's feast, a royal feast indeed. Thank you very much for that. So my question should go straight to Konstantin. But if other experts want to chirp in, I will be very grateful. So a lot has been said today about interaction between scientists and artists and galleries and museums. But we usually believe that science only exists when we have viewers, when we have spectators, when we have uh, consumers effectively. You know, for 10 years, I worked in the fields of science and I was exposed to our audience who didn't understand anything. Now for the past three years I've been working in the field of modern art and well you know what modern art is. First thing you hear well everybody can do it, my three-year-old child can do better and again people don't understand it. But, you know, as we try to convey our ideas, we, we may find the simple but erroneous route of uh, losing the content, losing the meaning in popularizing it. For example, we can shoot a beautiful movie or we can write a scientifically proven text. Chances are it won't be understood. You know, I'm thinking here, we probably need a second symposium like that, uh, because so many good questions are getting raised. Now, what you've just mentioned is bullseye indeed. It is one of the key challenges I see. Like, we do have exactly this problem. We want to produce exhibits which will be very often artistically pleasing, and at the same time, we want them to be well, scientifically true. If I can connect now your question to what Daria said when she asked me about design. A design is a solution, if you like. And with our exhibits, we're looking for solutions. But in art, it's not necessarily deal with solutions, I'm sorry. Sometimes you're dealing with statements. And this is why we, st we try to start. We try to start by saying, or by deciding, what kind of statement we want to make. What is that we are trying to convey and how we can best do it. How we can do it in the most legible way. You know, scientists will tell, okay, now if you're going to popularize it, you know, People will be able to understand it. Shame is that it will be bollocks. It won't be true. And I asked the advice of an astrophysicist, and he said that, you know, in order to explain it to a nine year old, you actually need to understand it very well. Like, if you're not able to explain it to, to a child, this means you don't really cut your subject. And artists can actually help greatly. But it does require a significant, or is, does require substantial communication. Actually, Konstantin has answered this question in a way that triggers other questions. Uh, we have collected several questions from YouTube. So people on YouTube, please submit more questions. You know, your questions are good and interesting, but be careful. See, some of the questions you are submitting have already been answered. So, Sonia, you need to run faster with the mic. Well, first, let me thank you for organizing this forum, given, you know, how important are the questions you are raising here. My question is practical. What are the opportunities for transition from science to art? 
Like, imagine I'm a scientist. How do I become an artist or a science artist? And do I need to have a good command of science if, being an artist, I want to do science art? And the inverse of the same question. Do I need to know the theory of color? Do I need to know a lot about composition to be a good science artist if I'm a scientist? So what are the entry requirements? Like what are the specific hard skills I will need to have? Or, you know, in order to become a science artist, I just need to bring in a fresh perspective. I need to have, you know, some something philosophical to share, so to speak. Yeah, that's actually a very good question. What are the entry requirements? And it may indeed be difficult for a scientist to become an artist. And some people may feel that it's easier for artists. I'm wondering if Dmitri or Irina would like to take this question. I see Dmitri is raising his hand. Yeah, sure. Art and science. Indeed, there is something very important about art and science. Art and science effectively shows to us how we can be modern. What I mean here is that artists working in the field of technology, arts, or science, they actually sit at the intersection of different time coordinates. On the one hand, this person lives in modern times, characterized by very high speed, and it actually requires high speed of reaction and technological adequacy. At the same time, the same person represents centuries-old tradition of art, which is oblivious of time as it is. So you can say that a good artist tries to be modern, but also tries to be eternal, tries to make art that will claim its place, you know, in the millennial artistic tradition. A scientist and an engineer, in most cases, will be future looking and focused on, you know, what's cutting edge right now. While an artist will very often go very long way back to history. You know, lots of artists get inspired by, I don't know, ancient Greek or ancient Roman art. So I do believe that the secret of doing science art or art and science for people who have a technical background is effectively their ability to jump out of the window of rationality. Because, you know, this framework of rationality is the most important constraint that young scientists and young engineers have imposed on them as they get their initial training. So your ability to jump outside the boundaries of the rational paradigm, outside rationality, is the most important entry requirement. Oh, thank you so much, Dmitri. We have uh, pretty little time left for this extremely important discussion. I see lots of hands in the room and lots of questions online. And even if Sonia runs very fast, I'm not sure we'll be able to do it all. Я думаю, лучше по-русски, чтобы сейчас не перепутались потоки. А, у меня есть вопрос для Юрия. Вы упоминали людей, переводчиков, которые могут быть между искусством и наукой. So my question goes to Yuri. You mentioned people who can be catalysts or interpreters between the worlds of uh, science and art. What kind of education do you think will be required for us to actually, you know, have more people like that? Oh, that's such an important discussion, right, Yuri? So y you want Yuri to take this question, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, this is a very um, 
a hot question I would like to say because um, um, we just uh, completed one European project where the aim was to create a curriculum for uh, educate that kind of people. Uh, well, it's still in the making. It's uh, the curriculum. It's um, uh, it's not really satisfactory made. Um, however, um, right now we are using um, people that are mostly um, coming from creative industries because they are trained already to. Um, to be able to think uh, very creatively, um, they know how to make investigations and researches, and uh, they know how to prototype um, things, uh, and they are somehow connected to uh, the real sector already, being uh, the industry producing new uh, solutions or uh, uh, social innovations. Um, however, we believe that uh, um, we need to uh, develop a certain uh, skills to these uh, people that are um, able to deal with uh, humans coming from so-called situated knowledge. Uh, it, they have to uh, possess a certain degree of, of um, uh, psychology uh, and they would need to know how to um, uh, interpret between these egos that are coming from different professional backgrounds. Because usually uh, a situation in a challenge room where uh, we are coming together to solve uh, some uh, um, questions, some problems, some dilemmas uh, are very much looking like a battlefield. And we are speaking um, to each other, but uh, there is no will to understand uh, each other. So this mediating between these different psychologies, it's super, super important. And this is uh, something that we are trying to find answer to of how to prepare this innovation catalyst to deal in these uh, um, innovation situations. Um, sometimes when you bring uh, um, senior uh, uh, senior professionals, it's much more it's much easier because they are erudits. You know, they know that there is a life behind their profession. Uh, as Orkan uh, uh, says, you know, they are not just, I don't know, computer engineers, they are also citizens, uh, activists, uh, uh, fathers, mothers, and, and so on. And uh, um, innovation catalysis is, is uh, sometimes um, um, super um, exhausting uh, process because mediating between between these uh, uh, people um, and uh, taking, extracting from them the best uh, they can is uh, super difficult. And just in order to, uh, to, um, to tell you how we are currently dealing with uh, uh, this uh, the, uh, challenge, we are uh, developing right now through one year, uh, through STARTS actually, through STARTS project, one collaborative platform where uh, there are interactive screens, like six interactive, interactive screens and a huge interactive table in, in uh, between, that it's um, uh, like a common ground, like a common battlefield, so to say, where there is an artificial intelligence agency employed, that it's constantly interfering uh, as a dialogue partner with everybody else, and sometimes it's produced like a total humorous uh, um, proposals, but they, it proved to be super um, fruitful for the debate because uh, the whole atmosphere is there, it's then different. You know? And as we said, you cannot order an innovation. You, the only thing you can do is that you create 
uh, opportunities and conditions that these innovations come uh, uh, ahead, you know. And we are creating actually an, a situation a room where uh, we are trying to create the atmosphere. You know? And right now we are using this artificial intelligence agency that is totally unethical and visceral because it sucks you since the beginning in, but this is a kind of a contract between all of us uh, uh, sitting uh, behind the table. Thank you. Спасибо огромное. Мне кажется, Юрий все больше и больше, и все спикеры все больше и больше идей нам предлагают. Thank you so much. So Yuri and the other speakers are giving us an ever-growing number of ideas, and we still have loads of questions on YouTube. So let's take one question from the floor, and then we'll turn to questions on YouTube. Vasily is an artist, I understand. Hello. I am indeed Vasily. I'm happy to welcome you all. My question goes to all the panelists, regardless of uh, which uh, country they represent. Now, this symposium is being uh, is uh, is run in Russia, and you probably know of a particular political predicament Russia has found itself in. So you've mentioned previously that people now trust science less. I'm thinking that politics has had a role to play in that. I understand that uh, we have not uh, yet come up with a new term for arts and science, but so I'm going to use this term for now. How important is it for arts and science to consider this, you know, exposure to politics, maybe military technologies, and maybe science, arts and science doesn't have uh, to have a particular answer to this question because uh, classic art has been struggling with it for centuries. But has it had any impact on uh, your practice as a science artist? Orkan Martin, who would like to take this one, please shoot. Orkan, I see your hand. Um, yeah, it, I think it's a very important question, and uh, I have a very uh, maybe personal uh, thing to offer. I studied at MIT Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which has a very hand on hand in hand relationship with the history of many technologies that are developed together with the military. So it was very important in, since day one to understand this both as a student, an artist, scientist, engineer, whatever field of knowledge you acquire along, the, along your educational path, to become aware of the fact that most of the technologies that we deal with from artificial intelligence to robotics to GPS to biotech are all created with a political motivation, uh, economic motivation, and that is shaping the way we perceive uh, their impact. The Venice Biennial uh, Manifesto that we discussed about robotics is also implied, implicated by the militarization of these technologies. Similarly, the work that we think about art science is always implicated with the same kind of responsibility uh, that we have to have about the origin of these technologies, whether it's cybernetics, again, or computers that we use. Uh, but how do we deal with this is the important part. Do we uh, embrace this and go back and assume that everyone has to really deal with this in their own way? Uh, should we have a critical position? Should we distance ourselves to it? Or should we make that as a subject of our inquiry? As artists, scientists, engineers, should we also be critical of the tools and the technologies that we use because of their political nature? I think it goes back to the, the last thing I would say is that it goes back to what educational uh, path that you should, one can take in becoming an artist, scientist. Maybe it's not a requirement, but it's a very important part of, uh, part of it to be aware of that reality, that political reality that shapes our value systems, our ideologies. And if we become a scientist or engineer or an artist who is naive about the political uh, history of, our, of the tools that we use, we became 
uh, implicated, but we also we propagate the values uh, and the uh, uh, and the ideologies that these these tools, uh, these these militarized technologies uh, introduced to us. So you don't want to be a artist working with robotics, uh, unaware of the history of that uh, that that medium that is developed for you know killing people ultimately. May I also speak up? Yes, 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 of course. I think... Мы переключаем канал. Я думаю, что Мартин хотел высказаться, нет? Мартин, please shoot. Техническая команда. Do you hear me? Yeah, you do. Yes, we do, Martin. Please continue. Ah, okay, good. So, so I, 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 I thought there is something going wrong. No, I just wanted to add quickly that um, this question is very interesting, but also in, in, in some cases rather easy to, to answer. Specifically, the, the legacy of media arts, of artists, is and has been that they are kind of uh, getting these technologies in their hands and they are showing the, the, the potential, the criticals and the positives uh, uh, in an in a, in a, in a enlarged spectrum of possibilities. Uh, and in our history, it was the military at the one side uh, uh, utilizing and abusing these technologies for their own sake, but it was always um, uh, also artists and media artists showing us that these technologies are actually um, uh, also there to kind of uh, democ democ democratize us as a society, to connect us, so to speak, in a very neutral way, to bring us on eye to eye level beyond the political system. Um, that is that is fact, so to speak, uh, um, where we can say, okay, artists show the first here a different way to go. Another point for me is that it is clear that technology is shaping, so to speak, us as cultures. Um, as Yuri said, technology is not neutral, and as Orkan just said. But uh, one could also come and, and reverse this question. Um, so uh, how does culture shape technology and, and vice versa? Uh, that is also a very interesting um, approach, and we don't have to talk about military technologies. We just have to talk about normal communication technologies. Uh, and the history about that, uh, the, this term of uh, digital humanism that we that we have been establishing in the last years is literally focusing exactly on that. that the same technology is, for instance, used uh, um, um, by, by by the the Western U.S. systems for uh, for for the sake of capitalism, for the sake of uh, uh, making more money for the for the one and only uh, person. Uh, the same technology is used in China for controlling the individual. Um, um, but that does that does mean that there is far more potential um, uh, with the same technology, and it's maybe a chance also for the artist uh, to show us uh, a way of how to kind of um, yeah make this technology for our, for, for connecting us, so to speak, and uh, also with other species and so on. So thank you. Спасибо огромное, Мартин. Мне кажется, мы поднимаем такие важные темы. Thank you so much, Martin. We are indeed raising very important subjects here, subjects of a great scale and magnitude. We have loads of questions. I'm really concerned. I don't know what to do about them because 20 minutes to three in 20 minutes, we need to start our next session. What shall we do? It looks like we would all want to stay here and continue our discussion. And apparently session number one can easily last the whole day, which puts me in mind of uh, Marina Abramovich's long-term performance. But we only have two hours scheduled for this session. I am really at a loss because we have so many questions and it's time for us to start summarizing. So, you know what, let me ask one last question. It comes from Lev Monovich, who is watching us online. And Lev is uh, asking this question, which he indicates should go to me, of all people. And the question is like this, how do we 
best persuade scientists that they will benefit from a collaboration with artists, that it's more than PR. For some reason, Lev has indicated he wants me to answer this question, but I hope that there could be an opportunity for us to hear answers from others. Well, indeed, since 2008, Laboratory Arts and Science has been doing artistic residences at scientific labs. This has been our main modus operandi. And this is very important to me as a curator who is creating new things through others, right? And I want it to be cross-pollination. I don't want, you know, the artists to be the only people benefiting from it. I want scientists to enjoy it as well. So Lev is asking, how do we get the scientists interested? What I can tell you is that for, for over these 13 years, we've been working very hard in this particular area. I can tell you that we have seen significant change. Our first projects were pretty much fun-based. You know, scientists found it fun to discover artists. And, you know, they saw them as curious. It has changed since then. You know, now they are happy to invite them. They are very interested. We don't really need to do much to get them interested. And a very important thing has already been mentioned. You know, very important outcome for them, for the scientists, is not the product, but the process. They say they appreciate this process, which generates new ideas. And this is what, you know, Ars Electronica, and I guess all our panelists have seen for themselves and are actually doing on their own. You know, this kind of collaboration is conducive to new innovation. So naturally, scientists today see value in it. They see value in well, artists being seen as experimenters and thinkers working hand in hand with them. Well, it's well known that at many schools, say of uh, biology or synthetic biology or uh, physics, they now have vacancies for philosophers or artists who will be involved in the education like teaching process there and they will be helping graduate and postgraduate students wrap their minds around what the scientists are doing i hope i've been able to answer lev's question and yes i do believe that in 2022 it's much easier than before you know very often scientists get in touch with me and tell me how can you help us bring artists into our labs now i think there was another important part of this question like how do we do it without it being seen as pr this is indeed important because you know if we're totally frank about it what we have been seeing lately has often been pretty much a PR stunt. You know, some scientists want to attract additional eyeballs. You know, they want to have some hype around what they do and they hope that artists will help them with that. And I understand that this temptation can be so strong that eradicating it completely may not be an option but at least making sure there are other motivations besides PR would be important, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, scientists may be thinking, okay, this would be a good PR stunt, which uh, will make me, you know, more well-known, more prominent, and will possibly help me raise more money for future studies, which actually is not that bad of a motivation. 
And I do understand that this is something that, well, maybe difficult to change, right? But in any case, I'm thinking that, you know, if uh, both actors are inspired by a particular idea, this inspiration can be a very important spark, which will help the two develop a relationship of trust. See, it's falling on me now. It's attacking you. I think it's a sign, guys, that you know, if we continue enjoying ourselves here, we will be stealing time from the other sessions. It's a shame. It's, it feels really painful to stop this session. I see Irina's hand is up. Irina? Yeah, let me jump on this bandwagon real quick to respond to Lev's question. You know, scientists are usually interested in publications in peer-reviewed magazines. And they may be interested in very specific innovations in the methods they are using or the tools that they are using. At least this is what my uh, four years of collaboration with the Institute of Physiology have taught me. So if involvement of an artist can up your chances of producing a good scientific article, you will be interested as a scientist for sure. And yes, I can actually corroborate that, you know, we've had those projects which were geared not just towards artistic statements, but towards, uh, you know, high quality science prediction. Well, that's actually an ideal outcome of collaboration, right? When you produce both a scientific article and an artistic statement. Yeah, but the question is, does that happen often? What I know as an example is symbiotica silent barrage right i think everybody knows this one you know it led both to a scientific article and a good piece of art but there have not been too many cases like this if you ask me so i do believe on these rights that mutual trust is extremely important i think it's impossible to mass produce science art collaborations they only work out when there is chemistry between the artist and the scientist. You know, it's a matter of, you know, it's a, it's a matter of, uh, well, being personally engaged. I do believe that mutual trust and respect play a very important role. You know, when I bring scientists, to a gallery or an artist to a lab, I try to make it clear that, well, I want to start a chemical reaction. And I'm looking for the first spark in the ice. Now, the process that has been mentioned here a number of times is indeed very important. Both scientists and artists are interested in cross-pollination. Dear friends, I'm sorry, we have to start wrapping up. I am totally amazed and I'm so much touched by your participation and your contributions. It's such a pleasure to have you both physically on the stage and online. I understand that you are in different countries and in different cities, but we can actually feel your energy, your engagement. We can feel your fire burning, you know? And it's, it's so precious indeed. So I do hope that this discussion will impact many minds and hearts. It's uh, pretty difficult for me to actually summarize this discussion though. We are here in a process of transformation. This transformation will continue. And I think it's very important for us to stay united. You know, a lot has been said earlier today about uh, humanistic values. Indeed, these values are of absolute importance to us. The value of peace, 
no war ever the valley of science the valley of art the valley of creator and the act of creation these are the things that we all share i guess thank you very much again i have no clue really how to end this discussion let's just wave at each other shall we and uh, let's stay in touch okay i hope we will be able to meet each other physically not just online if you have any short words of farewell it's absolutely okay to chip in <laughs> just thank you thank you so much guys thank you thanks to all the participants and i hope to see you soon